my darkest moment was when I was sexually assaulted this year. And I think it took me a long time to process what happened. So the darkest moment in my life actually isn't one moment but rather quite a long period and it was when I was struggling with the fact that my parents have a very rocky relationship. It gave me a lot of insecurities because it made me realise how come everyone else has a happy family except for me and because I'm an only child I felt like I had to face this alone. But what helped was I had very good friends from primary school all the way till now. So um, I would say that in a way, my life is a success because I have very good friends who were here throughout the whole way and mm, they didn't judge me for the problems I was going through and they were always here to encourage me. And another thing is, as I grew up, I realised that mm, my problem isn't an individual one, it's actually quite a huge social phenomenon. And I know that um, a lot of people are facing the same issue, but they are also putting in effort to live their best every day. The more healthy mechanisms I think are I exercise quite regularly and I think a good run really will just make me feel happier. And also watching stupid stuff on YouTube and cat videos. So I would say do something that's good for your body and your mind to take uh, your mind off other things that are troubling you at least for a while to give yourself a break. Yeah, and also to have um, hobbies that you are really passionate about. Uh, there are many different dark moments in life and one that really stood out for me is uh, when I was in the army and I just uh, had a broken relationship uh, with my girlfriend. I think it's something that many of us have experienced before. Uh, I thought it wouldn't hit me that hard but it hit me very hard and uh, I went into a downward spiral I did not expect to but it was very a very depressive state, uh, even to the extent that uh, I tried to hurt myself. And I thought that was very strange, very uncharacteristic of me, uh, but it was oh, very much a downward spiral. It's almost as though you were in a wave and you couldn't know which way was up and which way was down. I think for many of us who have served in, in army uh, at one point of our lives, uh, if you had a broken relationship or uh, you broke up with your girlfriend, um, and you are stuck in camp and you do, you know, you have self-doubt, you have uh, doubts over your self-worth, you don't know why you've been broken up. Is it because you are uh, in camp and, you know, maybe that uh, person had found somebody else? There's a lot of self-doubt and you felt stuck. Uh, I felt uh, quite uh, insecure in many different ways and I thought that was uh, quite a challenging time for me personally. Uh, I had thankfully many good friends uh, within uh, the camp, within army, uh, my family and my friends uh, who just listened. They took the time just to listen. They did not judge, they did not give advice. Uh, and over time, uh, I found that the story, the testimony um, really helped when uh, I was uh, looking after and caring for my own soldiers. And they also went through the same challenges uh, within army and I was able to share uh, my darkest moments with them and guide them through their own darkest moments. So I thought in some ways it turned out to be a blessing in disguise even. And the single most important advice to give is don't be too hard on yourself. Uh, there are many different people who go through the same challenges uh, every single day and if you are facing an issue, uh, know that you're not alone. If you have faced and overcome that issue, uh, be really open to reach out a helping hand to others who may be going through a tough time. My darkest moment has been uh, when I was in my 20s and this time I was going through a pretty bad breakup. Uh, I was on the verge of committing suicide actually a few times. Uh. So who helped me through the darkest times was actually it's not a particular person. It's music, music and books. There's this song by John May, it's called uh, Age of Desire. So like it, it was released the same year I was like struggling with the breakup. So um, when I heard the words, right, like it was really exactly what I was feeling. Uh. Like I felt I was uh, uh, on my bed all day. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't get out. I was like spiraling out of control. And then like listening to the song repeatedly, right, actually helped me to pass my time. And then like 
time is really necessary for healing all kinds of wounds. At that time, I really felt like not waking up every night I go to bed. Because as soon as you wake up, right, then all the pain comes. Music is really such an important part of me. So like whenever I feel uh, sad, I have a playlist of songs that I can, I can just click play. And then it helps to uh, get me through it. Because like I know uh, in the past, when, whenever I'm feeling pain, you know, and like there is no one there for me or I'm not comfortable revealing my pain to people. So I'm just pretty much alone. So now um, at least I have some friends, but if I don't have, there's always a playlist so that I can, I don't know, just press play and cry for half an hour, go to bed, and then it, it feels a bit better the next day. My advice for others suffering from mental issues is that like, it, it's, it's obviously going to feel really painful and like you're going to feel like nothing's going to work. Um, you're, you're going to feel like it doesn't matter how long it takes. You're still going to feel the same pain. But as long as you don't really give up, as long as you try to stay alive, it will eventually get better. The darkest moment in my life, to be honest, uh, so far is really during the time when I went through my first general election in 2011. I think because I was in my 20s and uh, probably wasn't as experienced and didn't have a track record compared to some of the other candidates. And so I was uh, the subject of many criticisms, doubts online. So it was to the extent whereby anything that I tried to say or convey, uh, even the most innocent polls could attract thousands of comments and many of them are quite nasty. And actually part of that actually spilled over into the real world where there were people who were heckled at me on the street. So it was very tough. You know, at the end of the day, I would go home and I would start crying or break down. Uh, a few groups of people, I would say, gave me strength. They rallied around me. First of all, of course, it's my husband. So he was there all the way, uh, went through all my episodes of uh, breaking down and, 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 you know, telling me stories, you know, of uh, inspiring stories uh, to, to, to push, to cheer me on. Uh, my team in McPherson, who never gave up on me, uh, and, and continued to, you know, strive alongside me. And so that, for that, I'm grateful. Of course, my residents who eventually also gave me their trust, uh, that also gave me strength. Um, there were also some friends as well as people I don't know um, who would drop me messages and emails to, to, to just say something kind and that gave me strength as well. And of course, lastly, uh, my party leaders who also did not give up on me and that gave me the courage to also continue in my journey. In some more other personal moments, what I do is uh, I talk to myself. Uh, sometimes I think we need a bit of positive talk as well to just lift ourselves a little bit. It's not about being narcissistic, but it's also that uh, once in a while, we, we ourselves, at least for me, need that uh, little boost. I also feel that uh, it's useful to just talk to someone. Um, it could be your family, it could be your friend, it could just be anyone in the community. There are people who care and we should not shy away uh, from seeking help or seeking a listening ear at the very least. Uh, there are people who care and that uh, they will not mind, you know, lending you a few moments of, you know, in, of their life or whatever that they are doing, that, that few minutes to listen to you. And I find that absolutely cathartic sometimes. And that, uh, you know, it, there's nothing to be shy about. And that I would definitely encourage you to reach out if you ever feel that, uh, you know, very absorbed into, you know, almost like a whirlpool. Um, don't fret, don't give up, reach out. Um, the darkest moment that I had was in 2017 when I actually um, had my first uh, episode of depression and then um, it was really dark. I had a lot of negative thoughts, uh, feeling really hopeless, guilty, um, feeling like I wanted to take my life um, and I felt all alone and that nobody understood where I was and that there was no point in going forward. But what really helped me was reaching out and trying to connect with um, people, um, other people facing similar struggles. Um, I reached out online and went to look up um, 
people with mental health conditions in Singapore and I got in touch with a really strong group of peers um, who have journeyed with me and they were the ones that held the hope for me um, and really empowered me to be who I really was and that really inspired me as well to want to get better, recover and use my own lived experience to share with other people who are going through similar um, struggles. For my own mental health, I do a lot of different things. I've, over time, I've learned to sort of build up my, my toolkit of, of self-care activities and stuff that can help rejuvenate me and replenish my energy. For example, uh, things like getting good night's sleep, going for regular exercise, hang out with friends. Um, recently, I've been very into uh, mindfulness meditation. So I try to practice every day. And I guess also spending time to think about my day and be grateful um, every day. Um, and I think on top of that as well, yeah, I, I go to therapy regularly um, with my psychologist and we try to work on the things that have gotten me down in the past. And also, yeah, I'm on, on antidepressant medication as well. So I guess that helps as well. It's never too late and it's never too early to go and um, seek help. You, you being the one to take that first step is actually the most important thing. And it's the biggest step you, can, you have to take for yourself. No one can do it for you. Um, and for my, myself, I regret not having done so earlier and always um, thinking or doubting whether things were serious enough for me to go and seek help. If you're afraid, if, if, if there are questions that are holding you back from seeking the help you need, um, there are people out there um, who have gone through, gone down a similar journey and they have experience, they have, they have stories to tell and use them, reach out to them, connect with them and have them be the one that are supporting you uh, through this very dark journey because you don't have to do it alone but you alone have to do it. Share your darkest moment and who helped you overcome it. Um, I thought it was going to be easier than it actually is. <laughs> um, Um, my, my darkest moment was when I was sexually assaulted this year and I think it took me a long time to process what happened. It took me a long time to process what happened and how I felt about it and also how I was going to uh, deal with it and try and find some sense of justice about what I could do. I was very confused because I had no idea what I could do to help myself afterwards. Um, a close friend helped me through the episode and is still working to kind of help me navigate the situation. So he advised me to get a lawyer and that was a really big step to begin with because then I could get legal advice on the matter and understand what I could do about it next. And um, I think without his help, I 
probably still would not have known what I could do. Something everyone should do for their own mental health is to not ignore it. Don't ignore how you feel about things and don't invalidate your own feelings in different situations because how you feel about something is actually a lot more important than you could imagine. Therapy has been helpful because there's somebody that I can speak with to bounce off my thoughts, my feelings, help me process and help me grow as a person. Okay, uh, my darkest moment is probably three years ago when my father just passed away. So it's actually a few months after when um, I don't think I have overcome it, looking at my state now. <laughs> but I guess the reason why I'm sharing this on camera today <laughs> is like part of me trying to face these emotions and I don't know, handle it properly. like after so long <laughs> so yeah sharing this on this episode this set here is probably part of my first step to really handle it and overcome it properly it's never wrong to feel the way you're feeling acknowledge your, fe your feelings your emotions it's okay to feel bad about yourself it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling Mm, don't ever think like I shouldn't be feeling this way it's wrong to feel this way your emotions your feelings are valid and others opinions doesn't don't don't let it affect yeah um I consider myself generally a positive person and so a lot of the challenges in my life I don't really consider them like my darkest moments but there were difficult times and one of those was when my son fell ill he was very sick and he had to undergo a few rounds of surgery and I really felt at a loss I wasn't in a state of mind to deal with the work that I had to do I was actually very sad all the time and feeling guilty about what happened to him because I blamed myself for not taking care of him well enough such that he felt ill so the people I spoke to those friends who reached out who whenever I needed to talk would just you know pick up the phone and call me um, gave me words of assurance um, made me feel strong uh, gave me encouragement prayed for me and my son and I think that gave me the courage um, and the sanity to be able to go through the difficult times I think over time, I've become very conscious about my emotions, my feelings. So when things get a bit difficult, when I'm feeling unsure or upset about myself, I try to catch myself and say, hey, why am I feeling this way? I'm quite honest with myself, um, whether I've done things well or not, um, and where I can do better. Um, but when I catch myself like spiraling a little bit and start to think about the worst of things, um, I try to reach out to either my husband or my best friend or someone in the family to just talk it out and express how I feel. And oftentimes, it puts things in context and gives me clarity as to how to overcome that difficult period. I think we all have ups and downs in our lives. We all go through difficult times. And at any one moment, someone beside you may just be having a miserable day. Um, and you may be in that position to actually help that person. Um, I think what I really hope to see is that people become more conscious, more aware of this so that they can take care of themselves but also um, hold out a helping hand to someone else, be that shoulder to cry on, be that listening ear um, and provide that support. If every one of us took that little time to just look around and care, I think the world would be a better place. Uh, it was during COVID uh, these two years, not being able to do what I love, which is perform, uh, made me feel miserable. I felt very unproductive and I felt like I just couldn't do anything that fulfilled me. The people that tied me through those moments were my closest friends and of course my parents and my sister, my family. 
I try to have perspective when I look at my own life and I try to be grateful for what I have. I think we always want more and we always feel like we can achieve more, but sometimes it takes a shift in perspective to realize what we have and there's already so much to be grateful for. While I think it is important to always uh, try to strive to be someone better, I think we sometimes should also cut ourselves some slack and acknowledge uh, the good that we've done and to not put too much pressure on ourselves. My darkest moment was when I came to the realization that a group of friends that I trusted a lot uh, secretly hated being around me and they were only putting up a front uh, in order to appear as good and civil people. Um, it was a whole series of misunderstandings. Um, I agree that I had some part to blame as well. Um, but it's, it was just more the way that they handled the whole situation that really uh, made me feel that like, wow, okay, people can really be, you never really know a person. Like you, you can know them for years and years and yet they can still turn out to be completely different from the people that you thought that they were. I would say um, my loved ones, Jesus, praying and all that, it really helped me through that as well as some, a good deal of therapy. Yep. Um, I'm someone that needs a good balance of me time as well as time with people that I love and trust. And something that I really do to help myself with that is to give myself enough of both. I think in the past, I kind of prioritized one over the other. I prioritized hanging out with people and people that I love more than like time for myself. And I realized in hindsight that uh, it doesn't always work that way. I kind of need time to and space to decompress on my own as well. I would say to treat yourself as you would treat your own best friend. Uh, you wouldn't say mean things to a best friend. You wouldn't berate and like be mean to your best friend. So similarly, if you see yourself as your own best friend, you'll learn to be kinder to yourself too. Oh my god, it's very nice. Yeah. <laughs>